Hi, welcome to Unit 10, Day 9. We're going to look at our surface area and volume review examples in these videos. So starting with the first page, number one, what is the total surface area of a square pyramid with a base length of 30 and a slant height of 34? So I'm going to sketch what this looks like real quick. So I know I have a square pyramid, and when you look at it, the base isn't going to look like it's square because it's you're going to be like standing in front of it, right? So it's going to kind of look a little more rhombusy than it's going to look square. And notice I'm doing part of it in dashes because that's back behind the pyramid. And then I just start right up above this corner, the back corner, which is also dotted. And then I will draw solid lines to come to the front of my square pyramid. All right, my base length is 30 and it's a square, so it's gonna be 30 by 30. And I have a slant height of 34. So down the side, this height right here is 34, okay? I am looking for the total surface area. So for the total surface area, what I need to do is go look at my formula chart. So when I look at my formula chart, I'm here in Schoology. I'm going to go to resources and scroll down to the bottom and I can see my geometry formula chart. And I'm going to just look at my formula for pyramid. And I want total surface area. There's my flat area. The last page has my three dimensional area. And my formulas, they all start with S for my surface areas, but the first column is the lateral and the second column is total. So I want the second column and I'm working with a pyramid. So it's one half capital P L plus capital B, one half P L plus B. So S equals one half P L plus B. So then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and identify my base. Anytime I'm doing a prism or a pyramid, I always identify my base and I find the perimeter and I find the area. So I know my base, it's a square pyramid, so I know my base is a square and I can see it's 30 by 30. It tells me that in the direction. The base length is 30. <clears throat> so that means my perimeter is going to be 30 plus 30 plus 30 plus 30 or 34 times. Oops, I'm looking for my calculator. 30 times 4 is 120. And then the area of my base, the area of a square is base times height. And again, it's not the height from the pyramid. It's not the base of the pyramid. It's the base and the height of the base. So the base of the base, the height of the base, 30 by 30. which I believe is 900, but it doesn't hurt to check 30 times 30 or 30 squared, hence it's a square, 900. So now I can fill this in. My S equals one half the perimeter, we found to be 120. The slant height they gave us, a slant height of 34, plus my base, and the area of my base is 900. Now I can do this in two separate problems, or if I have my graphing calculator open, which you'll easily be able to access in the test, I'm just gonna type it all in. One divided by two <coughs> times 120 times 34 plus 900. And so we have it typed in exactly here as we have it here. And when I hit enter, I can see I had my one half times 120 times 34 plus 900, and my total surface area is 2,940. My units, there's no units given, so these are units squared. <clears throat> All right, let's look at number two. Number two, what is the lateral surface area of the trapezoid, it should say trapezoidal prism, Right, because that's what it really is. It's a trapezoidal prism below. So when I look at this trapezoidal prism, <clears throat> I want to know what the lateral surface area is. So I'm going to come back to my formula chart and look at prism and lateral surface area. So my lateral surface area of a prism is just S or L for lateral area equals pH. 
I know my formula chart here says S, but I'm going to go ahead and switch it out with an L for lateral. So I remember I was looking at the lateral surface area when I go back to use this to help me with my test. So P, H. My base, remember the first thing I say I always do is I identify my base and I find its perimeter and its <clears throat> area. So when I look at this one, I know that the trapezoid is my base for two reasons. One, it's called a trapezoidal prism. And two, remember, <clears throat> on a prism, any side that's not a rectangle has to be your base. So I know that these two sides are my bases. This trapezoid here and this trapezoid back here, bases have to be congruent and parallel. These are the only two sides of this figure that are congruent and parallel. If I look at the top and the bottom, they're both rectangles, but this one's wider than this one. If I look at the side, those might be matching rectangles, but they are not parallel, right? They're both flaring out from each other. <laughs> so my base, when I look, I've got 16 across the top and then four coming down along the right side. And then along the bottom, it's not labeled, but in the front it is, it's labeled as 10. And then along the side, it's labeled in the front that it's four. So my perimeter is going to be 16 plus four plus 10 plus four. So 16 plus four plus 10 plus four is my perimeter. For my base, my formula, if I'm looking at my formula, this is a flat trapezoid. My formula is 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times the height. 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times the height. 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times the height. So my two bases are 10 and 16, my two parallel sides. And then my height is 2.5. That's the height of the base. Okay, there's a different height for the prism when we come over to our formula. So my height here is 2.5. My base then is 1 half, parentheses, 10 plus 16, parentheses, parentheses, 2.5. So 1 half base one plus base two times the height. My area of my base is 32.5. Okay, so now I'm gonna come over here and do my lateral area. My lateral area is P, 34, times H, which I need to find. Now, when I had H down here, one half base one plus base two times the height, I used 2.5, the height of the base. This height, has to be the height of the prism. So how far is it from one base to the matching spot on the other base? What is that length? That is the height that's gonna go in this formula. So 18. My lateral area is 34 times 18. 612. I don't have any units, so these are units and it's area, so squared. Okay, and notice I always find the perimeter, I always find the area of the base. I didn't need the area of the base this time, but it was kind of a neat, neat thing to look at to remind ourselves that the height of your base that you use in the base area formulas and the height of the prism that you use in the surface area formulas are going to be different values most of the time. Okay, let's look at number three. All right, number three, find the shaded portion of the area of the 45, 45, 90 degree triangles below. It's important to note that these are 45, 45, 90 because that tells me that my side lengths, my legs on these triangles are the same. So I've got 90 and then I've got 45s in each of these corners. All of these are 45 degree angles. And that just is helpful because that means that if this length is five, this length is five. If this length is seven, this length is seven. If this length, well, we'll have to look down here to see what it is. This length is 10, then this length is 10, 
okay? Because they're 45, 45, 90, three that are kind of sitting inside each other. I've got this little blue one. I've got, if I took out the blue one, I would have a large unshaded one, and then I have, or a medium unshaded one, and then I would have the large total unshaded one. So to find just the shaded portion, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the whole big triangle, the big triangle. And then I'm gonna take away the medium triangle. I'm gonna take away the medium triangle. And then I'm gonna add back in the small triangle. I'm gonna add back in the small triangle. Okay, and then these are triangles, just in case we have forgotten our triangle formula. For a triangle, we're looking at one half the base times the height. One half the base times the height. And all of these are going to be the same formula, right? Because they're all triangles. Okay. Now, my big triangle has a base length all the way across the bottom of 10. So it's one half, the base is 10. And then the height is also, for the big triangle, the height is also 10. So that's going to be half of 100, which is 50. Then I'm going to take away the medium triangle. My medium triangle, I have to go across 5 and then 2 more, so that's 7. So that's going to be half of 49, 7 times 7. Half of 49 is going to be, what, 24.5? We can check. 49 divided by 2, 24.5. I don't know if that's what I said. 24.5. And again, we're taking that triangle away. And then we're going to add in the small triangle. The small triangle has a base of 5 and a height of 5. So that's going to be half of 25, and that is 12.5. Oops, 12.5. That's not where we put a decimal. So this small triangle is going to get added. So it's going to be the big triangle minus the medium triangle plus the small triangle. So 50 minus 24.5 plus 12.5. When I do that, I get a, an area of 34, and these are inches, so they are square inches because we're looking at areas. Okay, so there is the first page of your review. The next video will start with page two. Thank you so much for watching.